Hi folks, welcome back to my channel. As you can see behind me there and probably me squinting, um, it's an absolutely glorious day today. It's the end of May, the last weekend in May, and tonight I'm going to have a little go at photographing the Ring Nebula. The only slight fly in the ointment is at the moment it doesn't get dark or fully dark at all. So uh, that's going to limit probably my exposure times because anything long is going to get completely washed out. So consequently I'm going to use my Altaz mount here that I haven't used uh, since January time or so. Uh, along with a small 72mm refractor and aim to take exposures of perhaps 15 seconds or so. So, um, yeah, it'd be great if you could come along with me this evening and I'll uh, see you a little bit later. My name's John and I make videos on camping, astronomy and walking. If you like what you see in this video, then please check my channel out as there may be others that interest you there. But in the meantime, let's crack on with today's video. So this is the kit that I'm going to be using then. It's a Celestron Nexstar Altaz mount and onto that I've got an Altair Astro Starwave 70 ED refractor and I'm going to be using a Canon DSLR to take the photographs. So the Ring Nebula is a um, must-see object really for uh, beginners and experienced astronomers and astrophotographers alike and it's a planetary nebula which basically is the remnants of a red giant star that's in the process of dying, it's shedding its uh, uh, gas layers and these form a kind of circular ring that in the case of the ring nebula looks like a, um, a tiny little smoke ring suspended in space and ultimately the star that's left in the centre of that ring becomes a, a white dwarf and that's a, a basically a dying star and that's the fate ahead for our sun eventually in like five billion years time so the idea what we're looking at tonight is uh, what will happen to our sun in a long long time in the future it can be seen even through fairly small telescopes so um, i'm going to have a a go with this one here visually which is say a three inch or so size telescope um, to see if I can see it. Normally I look at it through a, my five inch telescope that's the usual scope that sits on this mount um, but I'm not really able to take a, a decent photograph of it with that. So I'm going to have a little go today. Allegedly you can see it through binoculars so it'll be good if I, if I can see it visually. And the Ring Nebula is really easy to find. It's in the constellation Lyra which is the harp and main star in Lyra is a very very bright star called Vega and it's either the brightest or one of the brightest stars that are visible uh, during the summer months so it's, it's a pretty easy target to find so um, yeah I'm looking forward to having a, a little go tonight ordinarily I wouldn't be using an Altaz mount like this I'd use a equatorial mount and take longer exposures but because it's going to be quite late before I get the chance to um, get sufficient darkness to see it and the fact that the sky isn't going to go very dark anyway I'm going to use lots of short exposures I'm going to try and get an hour's worth of 10 second exposures um, but we'll have to see how how that goes take the time to dig deep underneath this red heat we could really meet Layers It's time to lose these naysayers We're better off The air will be richer And everything's so much easier
pretty well done for the night. The camera battery on my DSLR is beginning to run out. I've got about 160, 170, 13 second exposures, so I'm fairly happy with that. Um, to be honest, when the skies are so light as they are here now, I'm pleased to get anything. Um, so yeah, I'm going to pretty well call it a day and uh, come back tomorrow and process the pictures and see what I've got. So for now, I shall uh, say cheerio and good night. Morning folks, it's another lovely day here in Sussex this morning. Um, so I was looking back on the images that I took yesterday and I managed to get a, a picture much better than I thought I was going to get to be honest for the short exposures. The very light skies, it never really got, well it didn't get dark, it was more like the sky was a grey colour um, and using a very very small telescope. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, have a little look to see what the results were from yesterday. So whilst the Ring Nebula is relatively easy to find in the constellation Lyra, it's a really, really, really small target. So given that it's such a tiny object, uh, visually I could only just see it with this 70mm scope here. And that suggests that to see it with binoculars, you'd either need much, much darker skies than me or a set of binoculars that had at least 70 millimetre aperture eyepieces. Um, but yeah, before we look at my image uh, taken with my setup, which cost a grand total of, I guess, around £600 for the mount and the, and the scope, let's have a, a little look to see how the... Uh, NASA Hubble image comes out. The NASA image shows the uh, remnant white dwarf star right in the centre and two kind of distinct colours. The blue coloured gas is hot gas uh, that is in the inner part of the ring and the red gas is cooler gas on the outside. Anyway, on to my image now. So this is a single uncropped shot homing in on the um, Ring Nebula, showing more or less what it looks like visually, particularly through my 127mm scope. Photographically you can start to see the colours in the ring, the sort of blue inner and the red outer, um, as I gradually increase the amount of cropping that I've had to do massively in order to see the detail in the ring. So there we are, that's my attempt to take on NASA. Um, I think we know who's won this particular competition. Um, but anyway, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you um, like the image and hopefully it'll encourage you to get out and have a little go yourself, even though the skies aren't particularly dark at the moment. But um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you next time. Cheerio.